All right, you're watching Greatness Quest on the Whatever It Takes Network. I'm Trevor Crane, bringing you the most extraordinary people on the planet to help you transform your life. And today I'm bringing you wealth expert Todd Gaster. Say hello to Todd. Nice to have you here, sir. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's awesome to see you, and I love the, I love the earphones. You know, so we don't have that. That's, that's great. <laughs> um, by the way, you probably have seen Todd in the Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, Miami Herald. He's been called by the Wall Street Journal and everybody else a wealth creation expert. And it was either in the Boston Globe or the Miami Herald. You know, he's one of the few experts in the world to use the neurosciences to help people achieve wealth, power, influence, and happiness. And all I know is I want some. So... I, I hope that you're going to give that to us all today, watching. I, I will do my best. We're going to have some fun. I want to I just take it in. As I take <laughs> a drink from my uh, coffee cup here my daughter gave me for Christmas, I love Dad. I guess oh, I love we'll see. my dad, too, but <laughs> I'm celebrating my daughter's Christmas present. All there right, you go. <clears throat> so I've known you for going on, I think, 14-plus years now. We were just kind of mm -hmm. talking about that. Uh, how did this get started? Like, how did you become a wealth expert? Like, what is uh, wealth creation expert? What happened? Well, it, you know, just like everything in life, things come through necessity. Uh, you know, I was I was extremely frustrated. I I had done what I was told to do. My parents, you know, just like everyone else is. Hey, you go to school, you get good grades, you get a good job. Uh, that works. For, you know, forty years later, you could be excited and, and have fun. Of course, forty years later, never actually happens and. And most people can't even plan next week versus 40 years down the road. But So I, I did that, and, and it was working so well for me that uh, my wife and I uh, moved into a 900-square-foot uh, mobile home uh, trailer. And things were going so well that we were, I was working three jobs, she was working two. Mm -hmm. uh, we were having, I mean, we had the American dream until the wind blew. Um, you know, so it, it, was, it was very frustrating. And, and, you know, it was one of those, it's like, I wasn't a stranger to hard work. I, wor I worked 100 hours a week. I worked more. Uh, I was delivering papers at 4.30 in the morning. And I said, like, you know what? This isn't right. Something, th th the system's broken. The things that we've been taught are wrong. Mm. Uh, and um, I guess uh, I really, it was really hit home for me when our 900 square foot mobile home was repossessed because we hadn't been making the payments. Because mm. our credit cards were full for me, you know, anyway. Well, so it came out of desperation. You said all that, I think, tongue-in-cheek. You had a smile on your face and discussing how it was great that you're living in this mobile home. I'm assuming you're saying that that wasn't great, right? No, no. I mean, Cause it's hard. I mean, if I'm reading your face, dude, you're you're totally, like, loving it. But you were basically saying it was the opposite of love. <laughs> love well, I, you know, you're, you're newlyweds. You okay. want to be with your, you, you want to be with your bride. And I'm working 100 hours a week. So I'm not, I'm not with my, my wife. I'm not seeing my wife. Isn't that the uh, definition of having your own business? You can work any hundred hours a week you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on whose business it is. Okay, and, okay. And how it's, how it's structured. Right, right, right. So, but you were so, saying yeah, you were working it was, for other it was, people. And... You know, what we did, but it was, very, it was very frustrating. It was very, you know, I knew I was worth more than this. I knew I, I had better potentials. I knew there was something else out there. I just couldn't figure out what it was. Right. All right, my friend. So... Tell me, uh, you know, I, we talked a little bit about uh, wealth then. You said, you know, did you get a particular strategy? Did somebody, like, give you a brand new job to go ahead and hook you up? Because I know that you're not living in a trailer now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I know you're not known by everybody as being this wealth creation expert if you didn't have experience doing it for yourself and your clients time and time again. So what was the magic sauce? And give Don't, me what happened. I mean, like, what was the transition? I mean, because I want to probe, like, how you moved yeah. out of it. But, like, if there's one thing, man, that took you from being frustrated and failing to, like, finally a success, what was it? Well, as cliche as it sounds, uh, is it was really my thoughts, my mindset, my patterns, the programs, the beliefs, the values, the things that I thought were helping me get where I wanted to go were actually preventing me. And uh, so the one thing that had to change is, I, I mean, imagine, imagine if uh, you look at your mind as, as like a, a um, you know, a computer and you go into the control panel of your computer and because it's been running slow, it hasn't been doing what, what you want it to do. And so you go and you look at these little programs 
and, and you see this thing that's covered over there and, and this program's over there and it says uh, you're not good enough. And you go, well, I don't remember when that was installed. What, what in the hell is that? And so you go over and you take the mouse over and you hover over it and it says, oh, this was installed when you were in uh, kindergarten and you were picked last for the dodgeball team. And I'm like, oh, well, that sucks. And then so you move over and you see this other one over here and it says that uh, you'll, never, you'll never have any money or you'll, you'll never, you know, there's never enough. And, and you look over that and you hover over that program and, oh, that was installed when you were seven and uh, by your dad who had forgotten, and this is a true, absolute true story, who had forgotten, uh, who had lost his contact case. He, he couldn't find it, and so he went to buy a new one. And when he was gone, my mother found his contact case. You know, they didn't have cell phones back then, so this is a little, you know, beforehand. A couple years ago, I got it. Got yeah. It. And um, so when he got home, she was all excited, and she walked up to him and said, hey, see, you have, you know, now you have two. And he hit the roof. He exploded. He couldn't believe he had just wasted that money. There's not enough money. He couldn't believe that he wasted it. He pulled a dollar bill out of his wallet, walked over to the stove. We had an electric, uh, a gas stove, and lit the dollar on fire. He said, this is what I just did. We'll never have enough. And I know it makes absolutely no sense. If you we'll don't have enough, we'll never have enough, is what he said. Yes. We'll never have enough. How old were you? Seven. And that and sounds so, like you remember that. Not oh, like yeah. someone just telling you this story. No. Do no. You, were you on your? Did you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm an only child. So you got a lot of love, and you got that great story. All right. I'm, mm -hmm. one, I'm sorry I interrupted you. You know what? Here, let's do this. I want to hear more about uh, that, and yeah. like what happened with these thoughts become things because I've heard that before. You know, mm -hmm. if I change my thoughts, I'll make money. <laughs> but we're gonna hear about what really happened when people come back. You're watching Greatness Quest on the Whatever it Takes Network. All right, welcome back. I'm Trevor Crane. This is Todd Gaster, and you're watching the Whatever it Takes Network, and we're on Greatness Quest. And our purpose here, the show, is all about you. It's all about helping you create success, taking your life to the next level. It's about you becoming your best. This show has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my amazing guest, who is amazing, by the way. This is Todd Gaster. He is known around the world as a wealth creation expert, I think... He's a superhero, <laughs> which I wear a superhero t-shirt almost all the time. I guess not all the time, but it often will be under the suit that I'm wearing. It took me a while to find a shirt that had snaps, so I didn't just tear my buttons off every time. But here's the deal. I'm bringing you superheroes every single week. I've known Todd for 14 years, and we were talking about what took him from, I wouldn't say broke, but barely getting by. You said your mobile home was getting repossessed, yes. and then... I asked you what the thing was that changed it all, and you said your thoughts. And then you told me a story about your dad burning money at the stove. So take me back. What 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 is it that what happened, and where are we going? I want to get rich and happy, so help me yeah. out. Well, it basically, you know, what you got to do is you go in and you look at those thoughts. And see, a belief that we have is nothing more than a thought that has been confirmed. Okay. It's a, so we all have thoughts. We have thoughts all day long. Someone will bring up a thought, and you're like, yeah, that's not true. And it doesn't become a belief. But if someone has a thought, and they confirm it, they say yes to it, now it starts to be, its journey. If you think back to the, uh, you know, I'm just a bill, you know, on Capitol Hill, back to the Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, dude, that was they, a long they, time. They, they, there you go. Get that. All, right. <laughs> all right. It's a journey. And that's what happens with your thought. You have a thought, you either can confirm it or you disconfirm it. Okay, so you had confirmed beliefs from a seven-year-old where your dad was burning money at the stove, all upset about the extra contact case he bought, your mm -hmm. last little piece. And then what did he say? What did he say? He said... We'll never have enough. We'll never have enough. And that thought was confirmed for you, I'm guessing? Well, yeah, because I, I just... He just burned money. <laughs> we'll never have enough. I mean, he's burning money right there. <laughs> what? what? Did you think that was stupid? Or I got it. Well, you know, at seven, you're just kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, you, you don't even know what to do. And, and yeah, it, it's, it, it's amazing. And, and that, if you grow up and you, and you go further with it, different things happen. And, you know, he would spend some money on, on something, and it would be, this came with great sacrifice. What? And so, like so, this thing, if he bought the, this, he would say, yeah, this came with great sacrifice. Yes. Huh. So if you ever spent any money, if you ever did anything, if you ever enjoyed life, 
it, you can only do that through great sacrifice. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and then how did it change? So this is where you were. So you changed your thoughts. How, how the hell did you do that? And what thoughts did you get that helped you? Because, well, I, I mean, if I'm watching this, come on. Someone's going to say bullshit. They're going to be like, man, what was it really? You know, what was your, what happened? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny because we all we all hear that you know you change your thoughts you change your life you know it's a matter of beliefs the the, the biggest obstacle you have to achieving everything is is between your ears and you know all all this other stuff here here's here's the bottom line for me all right I um I had an issue uh, a health issue come up where I was sitting down watching the Dallas Cowboys I fell asleep watching the Cowboys game. Now, some people can say, hey, that's easy to do, that's all this other issue. Hey, it was my favorite pastime. I love watching the Cowboys, right? Mm -hmm. I knew there was a problem. I called the doctor. Long story short, we'll get all the way to the end of it. I had sleep apnea. Not only did I have sleep apnea, I'd had the worst case that this guy had ever seen. I, was I thought you were going to have cancer or something, and you know. So okay, sleep apnea. So sleep so apnea. What what does that mean? I mean, I know what it is, but just if someone doesn't like, and what? Why is mm -hmm. that so bad? Well, because I was sleeping in fifteen second increments, and I never got out of stage one sleep. So basically, it means I could be walking down the down the street and fall over asleep. I could be driving a car and fall asleep. There would be nothing. You know, just because I I, ha I wasn't sleeping. And he literally like told a me Saturday he was, Night Live skit. Oh, like exactly, that. exactly. You're one of one of those you know uh, diseases or what, whatever. Where you know, and this is what it, you it, were literally dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was funny. I'd be having a conversation with my wife, and did you just fall asleep? I was like, sorry. Yeah, it was. It was really. It was really bad. And so I went. You know, I was talking to the doctor, and he, he says, um, "You're going to have to lose some weight." And I was like, lose weight? What are, you, what are you talking about? I'm not fat. Dude, that was 320 pounds. I was fat. I was huge. I was obese. I'm only 5'7". Okay? So I was you called huge. bullshit, though, when he told you you were fat? You're like, I'm not fat? No, I didn't believe I was fat. Because I could walk down the street and look and see. See that dude right there? That dude is fat. So I'm you went to fat. Walmart and you saw fat tur people <laughs> and said, yeah. compared to them, okay, yeah. all right. So then, okay. what, so, so then, what? What this did though mm -hmm. is, I realized there there was three three things that all happened at once. I saw a picture of myself. I got told this, and then I forget what the third thing was. But all of a sudden, I had this realization that, oh my God, I am fat. <laughs> okay, and it, it was like a light bulb going off. But at that right. moment, I immediately said. Well, I didn't believe I was fat. I wonder what other beliefs that I have that aren't true. And so I started questioning every single belief that I had in my life. Every belief that I had about people, about relationships, about myself, about finances, about spirituality. I started questioning every single belief that I had. And if you go back to what I just talked about a little bit ago, that a belief is nothing more than a thought that you confirmed. Mm -hmm. I started disconfirming some of those beliefs. Right. I started challenging the "we'll never have enough," the so, "we're not Rockefellers," and so forth. So I wrote down two things right now. So, what other beliefs do I have that aren't true? So, even though the world could, the other people who saw you in Walmart may have been pointing at you, say, calling you fat. Maybe your doctor. Oh yeah, no, they absolutely were. Your your wife probably noticed. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, and so the whole world. But you. This was also a time when you uh, like. You said that certain things had to come up. It was a thought that was confirmed. You saw a picture or something, and you're like, oh, my God, I am fat. And so you also had some leverage here. You're falling asleep in 15 seconds. Like, you're all of a sudden falling asleep. So there was finally a reason to change something as well, it sounds like. Well, there, it, there definitely was leverage because the other aspect from the doctor was I either had to lose weight or I was going to have to have surgery to open up my windpipe. Well, I speak for a living. Mm. There's not a chance... You know that you're going to be operating on my throat. Right. It's just it's just not going to happen. And so I had one of these. Oh my God! I've got to make a change right here, right now. Period. There is no other discussion. So I had to go in and figure it out and figure out how to do it and look at the that programming. 
All right, brother. Well, we're going to hear more about that. And I know you've got a free gift to give away as well about the millionaire mindset. <laughs> it's going to be a free gift to everyone. When you come back, uh, you're watching the Whatever It Takes Network. This is Trevor Crane with Todd Gaster. See you in a sec. You're watching the Whatever It Takes Network. This is Greatness Quest. I'm Trevor Crane here with wealth creation expert Todd Gaster. And we were just talking about all the stuff he had to go through to transform and go from frustration and failing financially financially to making a bunch of money, helping a bunch of people. Todd, tell me, we were talking about your transformation from that. You know, take us to the next step. What happened? What do you do for your clients? Because I know you work with them in your coaching program and you've helped a ton of people. Actually, what do you what do you do for your clients? Like let's say they work with you, what happens? Well, the first thing, uh, before we before we go into that real quick, one other thing on how, how I was able to make that transformation Something, something else that, that people need to realize is a belief, a belief does not have to be true in order to be believed. So keep that in mind as, as we're going on, and that was something that I had to challenge. Just because I believed it doesn't mean it's actually true. All right, totally. So, I, I mean, mean, I believe so, stuff all the time that's a load of crap. You yeah. Know, and, you know, and my, I think my wife does all the time as well, but don't <laughs> tell her that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So a belief does not have to be true to be believed and followed and whatnot. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so that helped you transition. So is this stuff that you use with your clients? Or Absolutely. I, I, I Basically, I take my clients and we go through the exact program that I went through, exact exact step-by-step step, uh, what we do. And, and how we start is, number one, is we get absolutely clear on what people want. You'd be amazed at how many times that I ask someone, what is it that you want, and they can't tell me. Right. Um, what did you know, tell you favorite questions. In fact, uh, I, I've asked you recently, what do you want? You did. Yeah. You you did. And uh, it, it's, it's, people can't answer it. They're quick to be able to tell you what they don't want. But see, the other side of it is not only will they tell you what they want, then they'll immediately start telling you all the reasons why they can't have it. So hold on, the, you said they're going to tell me what they don't want or what they want and wh which is the one? Well, the, the, they start out telling me what they don't want. Okay. Through questioning and everything, I will get them to tell me what they do want. Okay. And then okay. they'll tell you... Why they can't have it. Got it. They'll give you all the so, reasons why it's impossible. Exactly. Example. They'll, they'll start arguing for their limitations. Right. They'll start, here, let me let me hang on to this. I know that I, I know this belief that may, may or may not be true. I know this one, so I'm going to hang on to this. Right. And, and so we go through and, and we get an exact idea, very specific, on what it is that they want. What's holding them back? Where they are now? How are they going to get there? Mm -hmm. You know, do they have a plan? Do they have a step-by-step -step procedure? See, my, my, my coaching works best for someone who already has a blueprint, for someone who always has a plan. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will have a blueprint for success, and then another shiny object will come by, and they'll grab that blueprint. And then another shiny object comes by, and, oh, I'll grab that blueprint. Do people do and, that? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny how that works. And so there's a reason why they go from this one to this one to this one to this one. And so what I deal with is, all right, let's find out what your true why is. Let's find out what your intention is. See, the intention is the thoughts that we hold in the back of our mind about what we've done in the past, what we're doing now, where we're going to go in the future. Your okay? intention. Your intention. Your intention, that's the want. Well, it, it's, it's, yes, it's the want. It's really the why. See, a lot of times people will hear things like, I need, uh, you, you need to have a big why. If the why is big enough, the facts don't count. All these cliche things that you hear. The challenge is people don't understand what that true why is. They have a surface level why. So you'll ask someone, why are you doing this? Mm. Well, uh, you know, because I want to, I you know, my wife works hard. I want to bring her home. Or I want to buy the house for my, you know, pay off the mortgage of my in-laws or whatever. It's a surface level. And so what we do is we get to the, the actual, the meta level. And meta is simply another word for above or about. So we want to go above so and get to that. This is where we're talking about the neurosciences. Because you're licensed yes. in neurosemantics and NLP. You're a meta coach. So what yes. does that mean? That gives me a lot of uh, vocabulary words. Ba basically, if you want to get down in, down to the nitty gritty, is it's really the science of why people do what they do. It's the science, the study of excellence. When we talk about neurosemantics, we're talking about the meanings, semantics, neuro, the neurology, the being, and so what what causes us to do what we do, and so we really want to get into this why up to the top ah, level. so when you're working with someone, so you're telling me 
Because we've talked about how you're not a tactician. Like, you don't give somebody the new Facebook way of making money. And I know that with most of your clients, you're doubling their money and got people that have tripled their money in short periods of time. And that's your thing is the wealth creator. You wouldn't be known as that. You'd be known as the, you know, the guy falling asleep, fat ass. So, um, you know, so what... So is it this cause, like you're finding the cause, co- what's causing them not to get what they want? Is that also part of it? Well, it, it is. It's really how they see themselves. One of the things that, that I base everything that I do on is what I call inner esteem. Um, it, it's something, uh, a phrase that I've coined. You hear a lot of people say, well, you know, I have low self-esteem or this person has high self-esteem. No, there is no such thing. You either esteem yourself or you don't. You either find value in yourself or you don't. And, and so in this process of this esteem, some people will esteem themselves, but they'll throw conditions on it. Well, can I, I have a bad day? Can I love myself? Can I be like, oh my God, I killed it yesterday, and then now I think I, you know, I have a bad day and think, oh my God, I'm stupid and I suck? I mean, does that, is there room for that? Well, this is where it comes the difference between confidence and esteem. Okay. You can have a bad day and still have val- find value for yourself. You can still you can have a bad day and believe that you are worthy. Okay. And this is this is where there's going to be a difference between confidence and esteem. So See, I am worthy. That's a key thing. Versus I am worthy. another one. Uh, your dad said, "What is it again?" It's a whole. Uh, we'll never have enough. We'll never have enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Do you we'll have never a have new enough. Thought that moves you and your family now that replace that one. The the world is our playground. The world is our playground. Yeah. Right, that, that that's that's what you know abundance prosperity wealth you know it's all it's all part of it uh, wealth and see wealth is simply you know uh, people confuse wealth you, with money it was the sacrifice of the thing right it comes at great cost <laughs> it comes great sacrifice great sacrifice it's in great your life. sacrifice so you're now like no man the world is my playground mm-hmm. did you yeah. create the and when did you create that belief that belief was probably about, I'd say, about five to seven years ago. And actually, if I, if I could pinpoint it, I, it was actually eight years ago when we moved to Texas is, is when that belief started. And, and that was part of the process of moving to Texas. And you're in a home now, not in a mobile home. Yeah, no, we gorgeous, gorgeous home. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. You know, something you said earlier, I just noticed this uh, in the background. It says uh, one of the signs you've got on your office, it says success is a ladder. And you mentioned how people will chase shiny objects. Uh, I've got mm-hmm. something I've said before about like too many ladders in people's lives. Like I've seen it happen because I work with a lot of business owners as well to help them succeed. And I, I'll see them, they'll, they'll climb up a ladder and they'll, tr- they'll start something new. And they'll climb up just where it gets scary. You know where if they fell down, they, 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 because... They want success, but they stop climbing the ladder and they look down and they're like, I don't know, maybe another ladder would be safer. So they mm-hmm. climb down or jump down, but success is like, is through the clouds. They can't see it. They have to keep, they can pick any ladder they want, man, but they yeah. just keep going from ladder to ladder to ladder and jumping down so that it's safe and jumping down so that it's safe. And then they're like, oh no, another bright, shiny ladder. Let me go climb that one. They jump down and they climb up as soon as it gets dangerous, as soon as they have the opportunity to truly succeed. You know, they can't take that leap, that blind faith leap through the clouds because that's where heaven is or freedom or success, right? It's that it's unknown. And they're like, no, man. Too many ladders. The, the question, do they deserve it? Why, why are, you know, as they start getting successful, why all of a sudden, if, if you deserve this, I got a guy I'm working with right now, uh, he makes, uh, does, does really well. And, and, and actually, he's going to be one of my, my favorite case studies here because uh, he's actually going to 10 times his income. So it's, it's kind, of, kind of fun how, how it's going with him. But he absolutely 100% believes he deserves everything that he's about to get. And, and so because of that, he's able to take one course, trust himself, and, con- and, and to use your metaphor, and to climb that ladder. Because he deserves it, he trusts himself. He he knows he has value. He knows he uh, what he is doing. He knows the the skills that he has. And then if you go back to what I what I believe wealth is, wealth is adding value. So he adds value to himself. He adds value to his community. He adds value to the marketplace. He adds value to his family. He adds value to his spirituality. And because of that, he's able to be wealthy. 
So did he just come in having that belief, or did you help him transform it? Because I believe it, I add value, and I know I deserve it, all that stuff. By the way, those sound, I'm guessing that those were not what you used to say to yourself? No, no, no. Those, those, those were the exact opposite of, of things that, that I used to say to myself. And no, he didn't, he didn't come in with, the, with this belief. Otherwise, he would have already been, been making that, that uh, income that, that we're about to. So, um, and, that, and that's where it is. And the, the other thing that people need to realize is whatever income level that they are currently at, I don't care what level it is. I don't care if it's, you know, 5000 a month, 50000 a month, $5 million a month. I don't care what level it is. It is a direct reflection of your current level of values, beliefs, your, your matrix of frames, your means that you currently have. And if you want to increase it, you just need to change those. Uh, okay, so then all the training that you've done, you're basically looking for those values, beliefs, structures, the matrix. You talked to me before about... How you use a lot of matrix analogies in your known. Mm -hmm. What's the guys in the matrix you said? Uh, Neo, Neo, and Morpheus. And Morpheus, are, You're, are you Neo or Morpheus? Morpheus. Right. I'm not the one, but I'll teach you how to be the one. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So you fit. You uncover that matrix that's created this result. So my example of the ladder thing. People are standing on that ladder, and they can choose to keep. You jump off and go to a different ladder. They can choose to keep going. They can choose to just climb back a few steps. They can do whatever. Now, you will uncover the matrix then of what got them there and what they what needs to happen to get them to where they want to go. You find out what their what is first or one of the first well, things. One of the things, but here, here's a key to it, though, mm -hmm. is I when I come into my coaching session, when I run my coaching programs, I, I have what I call a know-nothing state. A playful curiosity. I don't know, and this goes back to the tactics, I don't know what you know. You are the expert in you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And I am very good at asking questions. Yeah. And I will ask questions, and I will ask questions, and ask questions. And it's amazing, just like this, this last guy I was talking about, is I'll ask him something, and he'll start dancing, and he'll get... And then he starts laughing, and he says, what? And he says, I thought I knew that. And he says, but I have no idea. And then he's got to go in and think. And, and this is part of peeling back the layers of the onion, the matrix of frames, trying to get back what those beliefs really are. And then we come back and say, okay, now that belief, do you believe it? Is it something that you can say yes to? See, this goes back to the thoughts and the confirming what we were talking about just a little bit ago about confirming or disconfirming your, your beliefs. Okay, do we need to take it back to a thought? Is this empowering you? Is hanging on to this belief that you just said, is it empowering? So there are it, these ma this matrix you're talking about, is that something that we get access to that you, you can, because now I kind of want this matrix, I want to know what all these, where these things are. Well, the, the matrix, that, that's, you gotta, you gotta contact me for that, but uh, I, do, I, do have, I do have something for you to give you an idea where you're at. But on that, on that same token, one of the questions I ask people, this will be a great question, uh, some things for your, your uh, viewers. Number one is, what is wealth? Okay? okay? Ask yourself, what is wealth? The second question is, what would I have to believe in order to be wealthy? What would I have to believe in order to be wealthy? The third question is, what do you believe? My guess is, if you are not where you want to be wealth-wise, there's a difference between question two and question three. Hold on. The third one, what's the third question? What do you believe? What do you believe? Yes. Cause so the second question is, what would you have to believe in order to be wealthy? Uh, 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 what do you believe in order to be wealthy? Got it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't write okay. that. And, and here's, here's a great example. I had someone I was coaching, I guess this was a week or two weeks ago, actually three weeks ago now, is I was asking these questions, and one of the things that we found out through questioning, and it wasn't about wealth, but it was about money, is when I asked her, what is, what is money? Or what do you think about money? Or what does money mean to you? And this type of thing. She came back with money stinks. Mm. And I was like, money stinks. So that means you really want to attract more of that stinky thing into your life, right? And what we found out was where that came from is when she was, again, a young girl. She lived in, grew up in rural Iowa. And they would be driving through the back roads and they'd come by hog farms. And her mother would say, hmm, smells like money. Meaning these were, these were, you know, very, very, mo most, a lot, of, a lot of farmers, hog farmers in Iowa are millionaires, very well to do. And so she would, smells like money, meaning that a good wow. thing. But this young girl took that in as the money stinks. Wow. 
And that was how she based her whole life. So I have a question for you. I just wrote it down in my notes. You didn't say this, but uh, is it there's a con... What the challenge is on the ladder, because that's my example now, uh, of somebody wanting to go somewhere, wanting to get to whatever their level of success is, it's somewhere up in the clouds, and, but there's a conflict between what they want and their beliefs. Is that yeah. accurate? Is that, that basically you're helping deal with those conflicts that people have and making sure they have a matrix and the steps to go ahead and so they know exactly what to do and then feel confident about it, like this guy you're working with is going to 10x his money, Ten times mm-hmm. his, his income, is that right? Ten yeah. times, or is it, okay, his income? You know, well, oh, and, and that's without increasing his workload. Okay. So just, just to throw that, because a lot of times people say, well, yeah, you can always, you know, you just got to work harder. No, without yeah. increasing his workload. Not, not, not 10x. All right, yeah. cool. Um, so without their workload. Okay, cool. So um, is there anything else I need? Like these questions were really great. You know, what is wealth and, and these three? Well, I mean, there, obviously, there's more questions than that, and then you got to start somewhere. But that those, those three questions will really let you know where it is that you're going. And to say something else, uh, kind of what you were just mentioning, yeah. it's not just a a challenge or a, a difference between what someone wants and, and their beliefs. Yes, that's part of it. But a lot of times, people don't even want what they think they want. And so we need to find out what that want truly is. Not what the, again, a surface level. Yeah, and a phrase that I've coined a lot of times, people want to want something. You know, society tells me I should want this, so, but I don't. But I really want to want what they say I should. Okay. You know, and so, you know, we, we got to find out exactly what that want truly is. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, brother. Um, so give it to me. What's this millionaire mindset piece? Well, what this is, is it's a, it's a checklist that will allow your viewers basically to, to do a SWOT analysis, uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats on themselves compared to 733 self-made millionaires with an uh, average net worth of $9.2 million and an annual realized income of 749000 What this is based on is the book by Thomas Stanley and William Danko, The Millionaire Mind. I believe it was the year 2000 it came out. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a study done on 16 different areas of their lives and the beliefs that they hold on these areas. So you can look at this checklist and actually go through it and say, yes, this is me. Oh, no, true, false, true, false, whatever. And you can see what areas that you already had that you were on your way to being a self-made millionaire and what areas you might need a little bit of help with. And if someone wanted to reach out to you, Todd, uh, you know, how would they go ahead and do that? If they, because I know you've got a coaching program, you do work one on one, you work in some small groups. You know, um, mm-hmm. how could they get in touch with you? NeuroSemanticsUSA.com. Whoa. Yes. Neurosemantics. Really. Spell all that. Neuro. N e u r o. Uh huh. Semantics. S e m a n t i c s. USA.com. NeuroSemanticsUSA.com. All right. Other easiest, find me on Facebook is, is probably the quickest and easiest. Okay, I was going to say, I mean, you seem to be pretty active on Facebook, so you're Todd Gaster, G A S T E R, on Facebook? Yes. Do you, do yep. you have Twitter and do you have a hint, tweet? Twitter? I, I, have a, I have a Twitter, My Wealth Coach. Uh, I don't, I'm not real active on that, but I do have a Twitter, My Wealth Coach. My Wealth Coach? Yeah. I have something like fourteen thousand or sixteen thousand followers on that, so it's you know it's good good information that comes from there. Okay, that's cool. And and I'm and I'm always running I'm always running webinars and trainings. Uh, I've got some some uh, trainings that I'm doing right now on making twenty fifteen your best year ever. Uh, it says that. you know ninety two percent of people actually uh, will not achieve their their goals and so forth, and we put it in a way that you will achieve your goals. Sweet. All right. Well. I want to, um, you know, anybody goes to great, if you go to greatnessquest.com forward slash Todd Gaster, G-A-S-T-E-R, we're also, that's where we're going to give the giveaway, and I'm sure it should have showed up on the screen here as well, so make sure that you check that out, or click wherever it is here on the website to get that, uh, greatnessquest.com forward slash Todd Gaster, or check him out on Facebook. Uh, I've known this guy for 14 years, and I wouldn't bring, and, and I wore a superhero <laughs> just for you, Todd. <laughs> and like I said, I had to crawl. Uh, I, I had to go find a shirt that would 
I can open See, up. I, I like it. I, li- I like the, the, the metaphor there, the yeah. flash. I mean, you know. Thank you. Or, well, you know, I think that we, that's our job. I think our job is to be like a superhero. You, 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 you find people who need your help. They're, they're not assaulting strangers on the street. You mm-hmm. know? Uh, I don't know much about Flash, but I know Superman. <laughs> that, I mean, you know? So yeah. you'll find people that need your help. And I think that's the secret. And I love the concept of adding value being the, the key to wealth. Because I completely agree, my friend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you totally should check Todd out. He's got some phenomenal stuff. I've known him for a long time, and I've seen the magic he's made happen. I'm very impressed with his own results. Uh, Todd, <laughs> I think I knew you when you were that 300-plus pounds. Uh, not quite all the way up to 320, but, uh, yeah, I, I was definitely a large, large individual. Yeah, I, I like um, some of your new photos I've seen on Facebook and whatnot where y'all slimmed mm-hmm. down, looking all GQ. Very yeah, I, I went all the way down to 160, and I didn't like 160. I've settled in, I'm, you know, I go between 185 and 190 now, and I, and I feel very, very, very comfortable there. But That's cool, uh, man. So, yeah, there's a long ways from 320. <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. Well, brother, great having you here. Any last words of wisdom for anybody watching? We got, this is Greatness Quest. What do you think greatness is, is and how can someone achieve it? Well, one of my one of my favorite quotes, uh, it is, talk about superheroes, actually comes from Batman Begins. Uh, Katie Holmes, as Rachel Dawes said it, and it says, it's not who you are underneath, but what you do that defines you. So my question to everybody is, how will you choose to be defined? Very cool. Great having you on the show. You're watching Greatness Quest with Trevor Crane, Todd Gaster. We'll see you next week on the Whatever It Takes Network right here on Greatness Quest. And make sure you check out Todd and the free gift that he's given away. All right? Thank you. Later! (laughs) Hey, everybody. You're watching Trevor Crane and Greatness Quest on Whatever It Takes Network. Make sure you check out everything that he has every week. Someone new.